if you'll come up. I think we're prepared to answer the questions that you might have. Do you have any, do you have any, any understanding, sir, of why he targeted this particular community? There's no way of telling why it was this particular community. Obviously, uh, we believe that his motivation was to attack a Jewish facility. But, and we have one, and, and we are one of those areas that is fortunate to have one in our community. That's the only reason I can think of. You said the first, you said the first call came at 1.01. Can you give us a timeline? So you said in 20, how many minutes, 20 minutes he was apprehended? So did he get to both locations in 20 minutes? Can you take us minute, like 101? I can't give you minute by minute. I can tell you that the first calls came in here at 101, which means the act had taken place and people were calling in as he was leaving. At the first. At the first one at the uh, community campus. He then went to Village Shalom. Which is about a mile and a half away. Approximately. Yeah. It's pretty close. And then he was over there at uh, school off of Lamar. So within a half an hour, he committed both acts, and we found him in the parking lot of the school. And can you be more specific about the information that led you to believe this is a hate crime that transpired over the last 24 hours? I can tell you in general terms, uh, from an evidentiary standpoint, and that's why we will not be specific in telling you what he said, but we have some statements that were made that allow us to believe that, that uh, it was in that direction. Uh, again, I can't tell you what those were. Can you tell us about the people that actually caught him? How did that happen? How did they find him so quickly? And was he armed at the time, or did he resist at all? Two of our patrol officers spotted the car, approached the car. He was armed. There were weapons in the car. They told him to surrender, and he did. So he's going to be facing federal and state? Uh, charges. You mentioned a, a grand jury, Barry, and then you've also mentioned possible state charges. Um, yes, it, it was. Steve and I discussed this uh, starting our yesterday afternoon. It's our belief that based upon these horrific acts, that either one of us would be derelict in our duty if we did not look to every arrow in our quiver. And both of us are going to be going forward with. Uh, uh, our charges, and if at some time either one of us decides for reasons that uh, from an evidentiary standpoint or some other nuance of prosecution that we need to step aside, then we'll do that. But by the same token, if you remember in the Oklahoma City bombing, those individuals were prosecuted not only in federal court, they were prosecuted in state court as well. So that is not an unusual occurrence. You've also got to remember this is less than 48 hours, and uh, Sometime tomorrow, we'll have Barry and I will have some additional information about how we're going to proceed moving forward. Um, so stay tuned. But he won't be in court today. No, he no, will no, not. He's in custody right now. Does the suspect have any connection to this community or to any of the victims <coughs> or to anything that connects him to, to gives you a, a, some understanding of why he would come here? No. We don't have any reason to believe he has any connections to this community whatsoever. Do you have any with you guys? Is he cooperating with you guys? Is he talking to you? No. Chief, Chief Dan O'Brien walks through here. Does he have, what is his background? In the, we understand that he has some ties to the KKK, anti-Semitic groups. Can you speak to that, please? Uh, because um, we're investigating this as a hate crime, it, it would be premature for me to talk about his bias or his beliefs. Um, what I can tell you is, um, he is affiliated with some groups, but I, I, I don't want to stand here and talk to you about that because, because again, the uh, basis of a hate crime is committing a crime based on a certain belief. So if, by me getting up here and talking about that, it would just really be premature. Would it be different if you could talk about his past actions, not necessarily? His, his past action was there. He was arrested, um, I believe it was in 1987. Um, uh, again, that's a public record. Um, he was arrested. Uh, he served his time. Um, that's really about it on that. 